Honestly, I love, I love these types of games. Tomorrow at 5.30pm UK time, we play Chesterfield FC at home in the FA Cup. And honestly, this is like the living embodiment of David vs Goliath. Chesterfield FC are currently leaders in the National League, which is essentially the conference. And they have the opportunity to play against the European champions away from home. There's going to be 6,000 Chesterfield fans in attendance for one of the most historic games in the club's history. Like, imagine the financial rewards they're going to get once this game's over. Like, honestly, I imagine the club is absolutely buzzing. The fan base is absolutely buzzing as well. And for me, this is the magic of the FA Cup. Now, like I said earlier, Chesterfield FC are currently sitting as league leaders with a game in hand in the National League. They're managed by the very impressive manager Jason Lau, who is a real like scholar of the game. He actually graduated from the Johan Cruyff Institute, getting his masters there. And of course, he has had a lot of experience, you know, traveling in Europe, in Portugal, in Holland as well too. And it's not a surprise because Chesterfield play with a very modern system. They play with a back three system. Sometimes they're 3-5-2, sometimes they're 3-4-3, three, three, sometimes they're 3-4-1-2. And currently, they are on a 15-game unbeaten run. They've had one loss this entire season. And the reality is, is that when you're in a league like this, it's very difficult because the level around you is not too dissimilar. So... Something very impressive is happening there right now. And they've reached the third round of the FA Cup by beating Salford City 2-0. Of course, you guys can see the goal scored by Liam Mandeville, who, you know, he's a guy to watch out for. Another player to watch out for is Kabongo uh, Shimango, their striker who's in red-hot form right now. You know, this is a team that will come out tomorrow, give it their very best. The players, you can imagine, are very excited to test themselves against opposition like us. And, you know, for me, we have to respect them. And to be honest, as a club, we never disrespect any tournament we're in. And that's what I love about us. In the Europa League, we've never disrespected teams. Carabao Cup, never disrespected. And in the FA Cup as well, we have that same level of respect. Because we're a team that wants to win everything. In today's match preview, you guys, I'm going to break down Tuchel's press conference. I'm going to discuss the predicted lineup. And after that, you guys, I'll end things by giving my final match prediction as well too. Let's hope that it's going to be a great game. And without wasting any more time, let's kick things off and let's break down Thomas Tuchel's press conference. Now, one of the first questions that was asked to him was about that back four system, that asymmetrical back four system that he used, of course, against Spurs. Now, of course, quick plug, you guys, in the card above, I'm going to link the tactical breakdown I did, new series, what we learned, give your thoughts and opinions, and of course, give it a watch as well. But as Tuchel said, you know, he alluded to the fact that because we had no defenders, we had no wing backs, we had to do something different. Um, we shifted to a back four so we could attack. And as he said, you know, really suited the players at his disposal at the time. And he said, you know, due to that, you have to be open to, of course, being adaptable and being flexible. He said that the structure is important, but the courage in which you play is the most important thing because you have to really believe in the system you're using. There wasn't much time for the squad to, to get used to it as well. So it just speaks so highly of the the acumen of the players and of course the manager as well too. Talks then turn towards Antonio Rudiger with Tuchel giving a bit of banter saying that even if he took Rudiger out for coffee he's scared that he might potentially push him away. Um, you know Tuchel wanted to really reiterate that Rudiger needs trust. You know he's a top professional and he trusts the club 100% to get something happening which for me kind of maybe implies pay this guy the money he wants. Of course, Rudiger, Tuchel, they have their private conversations. The manager will know a lot more than any of us know at all right now. And I'm hoping the club keep things simple and give this guy the contract I personally feel he deserves right now. Now, of course, last season, unfortunately, we lost against Leicester City in the FA Cup final. That's that one game a lot of us have actually forgotten about because of the Champions League win, actually. And you know, essentially, Tuchel was asked if there is unfinished business in this tournament. You know, Tuchel said that, yes, we lost against Leicester and we want to go back to Wembley. Um, we don't judge your opponents tomorrow. We, we just want to play, which is the best thing. And that then led towards his thoughts and opinions on Chesterfield FC. But Tuchel saying that, you know, he accepts that we are the strong favourites. He's not going to lie and gas and patronise and pretend. And due to the fact that we are also playing at home as well, this does definitely work in our favour. At the same time, we aren't going to be arrogant with our approach in the game tomorrow. We want to win. And of course, we respect our opponents. He did kind of allude to the fact that we should see a pretty strong, decent team in the game tomorrow. So let's see what that actually means right now. 
And after that, you guys, talk turned towards the January window and left back options. Now, Emerson, who Tuchel calls M, that's this guy right there. He basically said that he appreciates M. Um, he doesn't want to comment too much further, though. But he did reiterate that he trusts the club when it comes to evaluating options. Um, the club and boards and scouts are looking for possibilities now. And of course, if you guys want to hear about one of the targets we are looking at, and of course, make sure you guys watch my latest News Daily video. And to end things, let's discuss some potential lineup news for tomorrow. As Tuchel said, that uh, you know, it's a chance for players who have been out to get some fitness back. So I'm guessing that could imply that Loftus Cheek is guaranteed maybe to play in the game tomorrow. Um, Tuchel also alluded to the fact that lots of subs can be made. You know, you can use five subs in the FA Cup, and I'd imagine that he'll exercise that and potentially give minutes and opportunities to a lot of the academy grads as well too of course today he's going to fully assess the squad to see um if there's any that like, potential like you know call for cases god forbid touch with none of that nonsense at all you guys and i'm guessing after we saw a pretty youthful lineup against brentford we are going to see that that balance and combination between like experienced players needing fitness and a few of the very talented boys we have in the academy right now so i think on that note it's the perfect segue now into the predicted lineup now i would not be surprised if we went back to using like a back three system in the game tomorrow but for the sake of this video you guys i'm going to be sticking with the system we saw against spurs which is the 4-4-2 4-2-2-2 basically it's an asymmetrical 4-4-2 it's a lineup you guys i've gone for Werner and soon stop bell up front alongside them i've gone for hudson adoy and harvey Vale. In the field, I've gone for Saul and Loftus Cheek. At left back, and of course in defence, I've gone for Lewis Hall. I've gone for Saar, Christensen, and Aspilicueta as well too, with Kepa in goal. I'm going to break down uh, my reasonings behind this. I'm going to discuss some of the young players in the team as well too. I can admit that this could be a bit of an ambitious lineup that we're going to see. And as I said, I wouldn't be surprised if we even went back to using the back three because we do have certain players back in the team as well. But um, anyway, let's discuss the lineup. I think Timo Werner is definitely a player that can do with getting more match fitness, getting more confidence. I think a game against Chesterfield FC is would be good for him. Now, alongside him, I've gone for Sunsa Bell. You know, he's the type of player that, of course, he can run the channels as well too, but he also likes to drift off of his defender. He does like to play in those holes and those pockets. He's got a pretty good frame. He's at six foot. He's got very good close control as well too. And I think it'll be quite interesting seeing like him playing that deep line forward role with like Werner playing off of him. That could be a way to break down uh, Chesterfield FC. Alongside him, I've gone for Hudson Odoi on the left-hand side, a bit of the playmaking skill and ability. And on the right, I've gone for Harvey Vell. You know, Harvey Vell has an excellent left foot. He's actually one of those players that can do so much. You know, he can play in so many different roles. Uh, if he even played wing-back tomorrow, it wouldn't really surprise me if that was to be the case. But clearly, the club want him to commit his future here. He has 80 months left on his current deal. I guess we really want to prove to him that, listen, you know, commit with your contracts. You do have a future here. We do see something in you. And I definitely think with his skill set, uh, his ability to play between the lines, how he is in tight areas as well too, the set piece ability. And you know, you look at his frame too, the guy's looking quite seasoned. I, I definitely think he's a really big talent. And he's actually a talent I've spoken about on this channel, like, I think like two years ago. So um, yeah, I think I have to see him play tomorrow. But uh, moving to the midfield, Ruben and Saul. Uh, I thought Ruben's cameo against Spurs was good alongside cover. Saul put in a very stand-up performance too. Chesterfield FC is just another game for him in a sense. Just, you know, build that momentum. Um, I think him and Ruben could have a pretty good connection in midfield, especially with Saul being that ball-winning midfield player who, you know, moves that ball very quickly now and seems to be adapting more to the intensity and demands of the English league. Um, with Ruben as well too. I feel like he's got a lot of harsh criticism. Uh, all of a sudden, he's not rated suddenly, even though before like that little difficult period, I was remembering a lot of the great moments and skills and assists. I can't forget that Juventus won uh, his involvement for that. And I think maybe other parts in this game, like his defending, it hasn't been really praised enough or acknowledged. So that would be the midfield I use. Now in defense, I've gone for Aspie, Chris Saar and Hall. Christensen is another player that could do with getting more minutes now, now that he's just come back into the team. You know, working on that fitness because we're going to need him for games against Spurs and of course against Man City potentially as well too. Uh, Saar, um, I guess, you know, give rest to your Rudigers and other players in the team because next week's going to be incredibly intense. I feel like he, like I say all the time, he puts an effort, but I also see the lack of like the... 
you know, that top class ability. But at the same time, I'm so used to seeing like, you know, excellence all the time over the past few seasons that when I don't see the same things done by him, maybe I'm holding that against him a bit too harshly, which I can, uh, you know, I can hold my hands up to. Um, in this team, I've gone for Aspilicueta maybe to start. Um, just to have a bit of experience in that team, you know, especially down the flanks as well too. Some communication in that defense, I think that's definitely important. And down the left, it's a little bit of like a uh, surprise one, but I've gone for Lewis Hall. Now, Lewis Hall, 17 years old, he does play more midfield. However, this season, he has been playing a lot as like uh, a left wing back. And in this team, I've gone for him as a left back in the game. You know, he's got an excellent engine. He's got an excellent, excellent left foot as well too. You know, he's very positive. Um, you know, he really plays those passes with a lot of pace and swerve as well too. He's very confident in what he does. And for me, he's one of the standout guys actually in the academy um, this season. Uh, like I said, I said it a few times, I would not be surprised if he used a wing back system with Hall being a left wing back uh, in the game. But I felt like I kind of want to see a 4-4-2 again maybe I'm being a bit too I'm getting a bit too carried away I can understand that and I do think that this gives Alonso the opportunity to rest so we don't overuse him and I think Hall can actually adapt because he's a guy that can literally play all down that left hand side whether that's in midfield whether that's left back left wing back and in a sense think of him as like the left side of Reese James. I think that's like one of the good comparisons to give with this game to be honest and you guys on that note that is my predicted lineup to end things, we now move on to the final match prediction and I'm going for a respectful 4-0 win. Um, I'd like to hope we can get more goals though. You know, maybe 5, 6, 7. We have to see how the game goes and it depends on, you know, the application in which uh, Chesterfield actually play with. I'd imagine that they're going to play with a lot of like heart, a lot of effort. This is like a momentous occasion for them and you know that we're not going to be patronising because we don't do that. We want to win the game. Ideally, the quicker we win it, then the more opportunities we have for players to rest and give other minutes to guys on the bench as well. So you guys, on that note, that is my preview out of the way. Give your thoughts and opinions below, of course, for the lineup as well. I definitely want to read you guys' thoughts on the predicted lineup. And on that note, I'm in the FC. This is Blue Lions TV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos. Cool.